Hello and welcome to the Bar Studio School. Today we have Kay Bahar, who is an award film, uh, an award-winning Kurdish film director. We are very happy to have you here, Kay. To start off, can you tell us a bit about yourself, please? Right. Thank you very much. I am from Kurdistan. Yeah. I was born in, under the regime of Saddam Hussein. At the age of 14, I was arrested by the secret police, badly tortured. I was supposed to be hanged. Oh. So now, 44 years of bonus. Mm -hmm. That's how I put it. Um, my education comes from watching films. I was very lucky to be introduced to uh, cinema at the age of five. That's where I spent most of my life. And therefore, I wanted to become an actor and a filmmaker. And luckily, I made it to escape in 1980 to Italy, yeah. where I was absolutely in love with Italian movies, also with Claudia Cardinale. If, do you know the beautiful actress? No. I was thinking once I get there, I will marry her, but that <laughs> didn't happen. So uh, I did my film studies, I did drama school, and I worked as a filmmaker since 1993. So what does that make? About 24 years? Yes, oh God, yeah. practically, but otherwise since the age of five yeah. from here. Yeah. So I've been living 37 years now abroad, and I work as documentary filmmakers. Yeah. So my passion goes for fiction, storytelling. That's what I love. Recently I've started in 2014. I shot, I shot my first fiction drama, which is called I Am Sami. Which side? Are you on, Sammy? Oscar is my friend. Americans are our enemies. Don't trust them. Sammy, what's in the box? A box! Sammy! Sammy! He's going to listen. Take him away. Get lost. I was only doing my soldier's duty, okay? Sammy! Get back! Them or us? That was my first one. I'm preparing for my next one. Another short called Go Crazy. I am planning to shoot in October. So this is what I do. I basically live for films and making films. Can you talk to us about your next film? Ah, uh, well, first I tell you about, I've just come back from Kurdistan. Yeah. And this is a crazy one. Because Kurdistan is known for being a war zone. Right? We are fighting ISIS. We have 1,000 kilometers front line with ISIS. Yeah. Fortunately, not 1,000 anymore because now they are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. So, but we want to do a motorbike trip. Yeah. Such as, you, have you seen Long Way Round and Long Way Down by Charlie Bowman and Ewan McGregor? So we want to introduce um, Kurdistan motorbike ride adventure. And that's we, why we were there to do a recce for 10 days, and it was fantastic. So hopefully we're gonna go ahead with it. We filmed it. Yeah. So we, we want to cut a 24 minutes documentary out of this. So that was the latest, a couple of days ago, in fact. Yes. Um, s since you've just shown us the uh, I Am Sami short film, um, right now, I have a lot of questions about that movie because I find it quite intriguing. Uh, I think the first one would be like, what sort of inspired you to make that? I think like the answer would be pretty obvious, but it's still interesting to hear uh, your point of view from it. Yes, it's set in a war zone, but it's not a film about war. Yeah. And if you really look at the film in details, it's not set anywhere in particular. It could be Afghanistan, it could be Iraq, it could be anywhere in the world, as long as it's a relation between, uh, it's a human story. Yeah. An American soldier and this little boy. Um, I took away the landmarks on purpose so that the audience won't focus on, oh, this is this, this is yeah. that, but on the relationship between the two. Now, there are two points to make in this film. One, as a child, 
you are put under huge pressure beyond your comprehension, beyond your understanding, taking massive decisions. And this leads to a big damage. So maybe we see violence in adults later, but the damage is done earlier, yeah. such as in Sami's case. Yeah. Uh, so I am trying to highlight this point. It's very important because I grew up in an environment where I had to take massive decisions uh, at a very early age. Not exactly in the same way, yeah. but I guess that happens here in the UK as well, even within probably your group where we put children under pressure and uh, ask them to do things that... So this is one point. The other one is the rela human relation is very important to me. We are very good at creating borders, looking at color of the skin, looking at the religion, uh, the group. We, we, we just love grouping, yeah, so uh, which separate us. Yeah. We should be trying to get to unite and to be looking at the humanity, humans. Yeah. And this is what the film highlights. If it wasn't down to politics or pressure from outside, Sammy and Oscar would be great friends. It's not about showing one part of the world being victim yeah. of another part of the world, which is what it, typically films typically, yeah. try to portray, like, oh, you are from Middle East, then you are... We, I need to look down at you and yeah. I need to look at you as a victim. No, 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 that's not. My films are never about that. It is um, a balance situation of human. There is also something else to it. If you are um, a filmmaker and you tend to make your film sort of locally understandable or use a local language yeah. and uh, make it victims and biased and all that stuff, you are restricting yeah, that's your true. market, you're restricting the uh, world viewers. And this is why I and Sami did very well, because when it was screened in India, they felt like it was their story in the same way in Mexico or in Italy yeah. and in the Middle East. In the United States, I think it took part in 16 film festivals and won about 10 awards because they feel it's their story. So this is what filmmaking is about, going uh, beyond all the boundaries. Well, going back to filmmaking, uh, how long did it take you to like film the whole uh, story? I am Sami. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I I'm, I'm very slow in making a film. Yeah. Because I really like to enjoy the process, and I spend a lot of time in uh, writing the script, in development, and in pre-production. Yeah. I believe your film should be finished before you go on shoot, which means in pre-production to be really well organized yeah. and have thought of every element. We didn't take long to shoot it. It was five days plus we had an extra day spare. Um, Post-production took a long time because uh, we had a wonderful team for editing, grading, and um, sound mix, which was done at the University of Bath, Bath Spa. Uh, so it, overall, I can say it took a year to make I Am Sami from the beginning to the end. Uh, can I just say, uh, with I Am Sami, uh, not only do I like the conceptual aspects of it and the sort of um, message, I also like the technical aspects of it. I've mentioned this before, but the shot uh, when it starts off with Sammy's uh, mother, and then it sort of zooms. Um, the like, tracking shot. Yeah, the tracking <clears throat> shot. And then it shows Sammy in the foreground and his mother in the background. Uh, it, in a way, it sort of highlights that it's kind of Sammy's story, sort of. Um, but it's still a really good looking shot. Uh, and I also like the sort of color grading that's on that as well. Yes, we, 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 uh, we were really lucky because we had 15 British filmmakers, professionals going out to Kurdistan. And you know, it's w known as a war zone. Yeah. But once you get to Kurdistan, you will be very surprised. It's one of the safest places in the Middle East, probably after Israel. Even maybe more, more sa maybe even safer. Uh, these guys took the risk saying, yes, we're going to come to shoot this film because they love the script. Yeah. And um, you know, filmmaking is a team. 
you need to always take into consideration everyone's opinion and listen to absolutely everyone's contribution. Oh, so. so our cinematographer, cinematographer was just excellent, Phil Wood. He did a great job. That, that scene you're talking about, that is also one of my favorites. I love everything he shot, really. All right. Yes. Uh, so yes. was it just him or there other cinematographers shooting different No, no, Phil was the only one shooting. Oh, right. But of course, he had his camera team. Yeah. We, as I said, we were about 15 British and joined by 35 Kurds, locals. Yeah. At times, between cast and crew, we hit 75 for a short film. But we, the town people were also very helpful because this film would have cost us over two hundred thousand dollars if imagine. we had to pay. Yeah. But we only paid for expenses only. We didn't pay anyone. And the mayor of the town, they and the people of the town, they basically called Mahmur in Kurdistan. They gave us everything, absolutely everything for free, including the Humvees, the weapons. Uh, it was incredible how welcoming because they want to promote the film industry in Kurdistan. So if you guys decide to make a film and you need an lo exotic location, go to Kurdistan because they also will sponsor you. I'll keep that in mind. Yes. <laughs> and in how many countries was the film screened? Oh, this uh, yeah. film uh, did very well. It yeah. was uh, up to now screened in 151 international film festivals. Uh, won 49 awards. In fact, the last award we won was the day before yesterday in Morocco for best film. Oh, yes. that's great. That's yes. Congratulations, yes. actually. Thank you. It, it, it did uh, way beyond our expectation. And uh, because of that, it's been picked up by uh, uh, Shorts International, LA-based distribution company. The film is now on iTunes, as well as um, going out on Shorts TV in the United States, so it will have distribution as well. Okay. Yes, that's very important. When you, why do you make a short film? After I will ask you this question. It's very important uh, in all my films, including in the documentaries, I tend to have this tendency of, of openness. Um, openness towards the characters, but also openness towards the story. For example, at the end of I Am Sammy, you have to make up your mind. Yeah. It's up to you to decide what's going to happen. Yeah. Often I am asked, can we please have the follow-up? Because we, we want to know what goes on. Or do you want to uh, turn it into a feature length? But for me, that's the film. And it stays there. Because from there on, it leaves you with thinking, with the message it has. And Sami, Sami is very important for the film. So to find an actor, and we are shooting in Kurdistan. Okay, it's not set in Kurdistan, but we are shooting in Kurdistan. Yeah. So to find an actor to play Sami was very important to me. So I went around for about 12 days casting in eight different towns and cities, um, British schools, normal schools, and I saw in the casting over 1,000 children Sami's age. But in mind, I had someone, and that was Toto from Cinema Paradiso. And so finally, when I came across him, yes, I thought, we're going to have a film. Because Oscar is um, Nick Court is a professional actor, and he's great. And most, he was great to bond with our little Sammy yeah. beautifully. They were playing together, friend together. And it was, this was important, because Sammy has never been on a film set, never done any acting. So, it's part of the film, this integration of all the elements. You need to really care for every single bit. Because at the end, if I didn't have someone to play Sammy properly, we don't have a film. Yeah. And could you tell us uh, more details of the filmmaking process? Well, <clears throat> filmmaking is a long process. It's a painful process, but it's a very exciting process. Uh, if you love it, if you are passionate about it, um, you should take time. Don't rush it. For example, you have an idea to turn into a script, short film. Uh, number one, you want to ask yourself, um, why do I want to make this film? Because not every story is a great story. Yeah. And not every story has a reason why you should spend $25,000 or $25 million behind.
So you need to ask yourself, why do I want to make this film? Uh, second, is it feasible for your capacity, for your talent, for your environment? Uh, instead of making a jump where you can, I'm not saying don't take risk, but the process of filmmaking is um, teamwork, respect your team, share, take notes from everyone, enjoy what you are doing despite it being very difficult, but most of all, never give up. This is the trick. No matter how hard it is, you will always get there if you don't give up. But the question is, especially when it comes to short film, why do you want to make a short film? When you make a film, um, let's say, if, as a filmmaker, you obviously want to make feature films, uh, whether it's fiction or documentary. Ultimately, you want to reach that level where you are making feature films. Now, some people are so talented that they can start immediately with a feature film, but they are rare. I am not. And therefore, rather than jumping on to making a feature film, which is very hard because it needs a lot of money, big crew, big cast, big production, what I decided to do, and most filmmakers do, start with a short film. So a short film is really your card to prove yourself as a filmmaker. So I suppose it's like testing your own skills in terms of, uh, say, you're obviously making a film, but if you are the director or script writer, it sort of tests your skills on those fields. And if you're basically making the whole film on your own, then it's really pushing it to sort of see how well can you do it before you go to a feature length film uh, or before you go to a bigger company and start doing you know, bigger projects. Yes, because in a short film, you find out your teamwork skill. Yeah. You find out how much under pressure you can still be creative. Uh, you will find out the end result. Is it going anywhere? And let's say you have a feature film project in mind and you're going to approach production companies. They want to see what you've done before. Yeah. So that's why you make a short film because it will be your playing card towards bigger yeah, projects. And, and it's sort of getting yourself out there because now that you've you've seen your films being screened so many times. Uh, a lot of people have seen it and a lot of people will probably want to work with you on future projects. Yes. May I also introduce you to something else? Mm -hmm. And then you would yeah, be yeah. welcome to carry on with. Now, you know, uh, many great films are coming from uh, not original screenplays, but adaptations. Yeah. They are first a novel, and then some clever people who know how to adapt this novel into a screenplay, then they are made into great films. Yeah. So this is what I did as well. Letters from a Kurt, it's actually a novel. It's storytelling, but if you like films, if you like movies, this is also a book for you to read because the lead character is mad about film world. And it's got lots of kind of connection with the film world. Although it's a storytelling, it's a human story as well. Um, and the reason why I mention, it's very important to care for the story and the screenplay. Now, this one is too close to me. If somebody asked me to turn this into a film and direct it, I may say no. This is also important. If you are a screen um, play, you write a screenplay, uh, not necessarily you want to direct it always. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's good to let go as well, yeah. to share. So it's all about sharing, about teaming up. Yes. Um, so any questions from the audience? Yes. Uh, how big was your budget for uh, the film? Very good question. Budget is very important. Always big consideration. We didn't have a budget as such, but we managed to get together $25,000. So that makes what, at the time, about 17,000 pounds. That was to fly out the crew, to pay for expenses on the ground. Uh, we couldn't really pay for accommodation, food, and everything. Yeah. Fortunately, the mayor of the town provided and the town people provided but we could hire uh, the equipment and a cinemobile is it called cinemobile yeah where you have all the yeah. gears in so very little compared to the value of the it's a big production value this film so very little but 
if I had the same knowledge I have now, I would have tried to raise a bit more money. Okay. The more you have, the better. Yeah. Yes, it helps. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. Um, I quite like that bit um, with the video at the end. Um, because amongst us, I could we could kind of hear each other going like we were expect we were expecting something sort of different from the package, but I liked the sort of emotion that was behind it, and it was yeah quite unexpected. Yes, uh, you know the classic narrative uh, beginning, middle, and end, and always tell you that your film is made of the twist you have towards the end. Of course, it's very important because we like this suspense. We like the idea of, oh, it's what's going to happen. I promise uh, out of the 151 international film festival audiences around the world, 95% or 98% thought it was a bomb he was going to give to Oscar. And this doesn't come out of nowhere. This has got lots of detailed studies for the script. For example, at the beginning when he's reporting, saying, what do you have in the bag? A bomb. So I am preparing you already, preparing the ground towards. So what's, what is great about um, being careful about your, your main story and the subplot. So everything needs to work in favor of leading. Ultimately, I am leading you as a viewer, but without you being conscious of it, because otherwise you don't want to be preached. You don't want to, you don't like it. So yes, yes, this is important. I, I wouldn't like to give it away, but often when you look at a story, when you look, when you deal with a film, keep that in, really bear that in mind, that change is what ultimately remains in the mind of the viewers uh, that is very powerful where it hits you beyond your expectations. So you don't feel like you lost your time to go and watch that film. Anything else? Um, I have a question. Uh, what advice would you give like, young people like us in, that in, are interested in filmmaking? Yeah, well, <clears throat> learn the craft. Yeah. That means if you want to become a director, learn every other aspect of it. If you can, because it's not easy always to find possibilities to actually learn about it. But you're lucky because you are here in a film school. I didn't have that luxury. Not only, I wasn't even allowed to study in my mother tongue. I was forced to study in Arabic for my entire uh, primary school, secondary, and uh, 12 years later, I hardly understood anything of what I studied because it was like studying in Chinese and I didn't know the language. So you are very lucky to have these facilities, to have the so much given in this country, in England, amazing for filmmaking. The industry is very powerful. So try to learn every aspect. Even if you are writing a script, a script writer, still you need to know about the craft. Um, learn how to do some acting. Go to an acting course. Doesn't matter if you don't want to become an actor, but then you learn how to work with actors. If you are a director, you learn how to work with actors. If you are a script writer about your characters. So same cinematographer in every aspect. Try to learn it as a whole, overall craft. Uh, don't expect it to be easy. And don't worry about people telling you that, oh, yeah, you can't because I am full. I have already my team, my crew. No, do right. Do approach. Do talk to people. To, there, is, uh, there are some great sites like uh, Shooting People. Do subscribe to Shooting People because then you get all the news from filmmakers in this country. You can join them. Um, basically, take all the opportunities given to you. Uh, take courses while you are not working. Write a script if you are not shooting. Um, draw a storyboard. Uh, most of all, just don't ever give up. And watch movies, watch films. Watch many, many films. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. You are very, very much. welcome. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much the end. Thank you very much for, having, for letting us interview you. And uh, thank you for answering our questions as well. And that was a very, very enjoyable movie as well. Thank you to Bath Studio School, and thank you for beautiful students for sharing this special moment together. Thank you very much. Yeah.